Hello everyone. Welcome to uh, a coffee chat that we haven't done one in over a month. But uh, as you see, my guest here is not Sherry. Thank Sherry. you very much. <laughs> Sherry is uh, up north right now with family still for the 4th of July. So uh, the rest of us are back. She's up there working on our new um, American Fiber line by Mitchell Wolf. But the rest of us are back here trying to get things dyed and taking care of animals and things like that. But um, I want to introduce you to Jack. Hi. Jack is Cindy's husband, and as you all know, Cindy does our dying. But uh, Jack retired from his other job, wasn't quite ready to hang the hat up and no. <laughs> offer to uh, come help out here. So he is literally my right-hand man, and unfortunately, I'm not outside as much as I would like to be or should be, but uh, but he is. He is the, the true farmer in the group right now, taking care of the animals. So. I have the easiest job. I don't have to dye wool. I don't have to run the place. I just see the animals and get dirty and fix stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we, we always say if, if Jack can't fix it, then nobody can fix it. Yes. We can we can ask Jack to fix anything on the farm and he'll figure out how to do it because if, if he doesn't know how to do it or he just has the knowledge to fix anything. So it's kind of nice having a Jack of all trades over here that can do what we need done. Um, it's cheapest when we can fix it ourselves versus having to buy new or to call somebody else in to try to fix it. So it's nice. But uh, so what's your plans for this week, Jack? Uh, what have you done this week? You know, what's, no. your, what's your goals for to get done on the farm while uh, I'm stuck inside doing some business no. stuff? Well, the day I have to uh, move the electric net fencing again because they've uh, used up the pasture where they're at now. So that's one thing today. I've got to move cows to a different pasture this afternoon, which you're going to help with that. <laughs> yep. And uh, We've already trimmed some hooves this morning that were in bad need of trimming just for hoof issues. Uh, I've already rehung a gate that was off. I put a new gate up this past week. Which was a chore. So, yes. That, that took, that oh, took yeah. a little bit because you actually had to, we were hoping to pull out one of the posts. So we had, we had a fence and we had this pasture area that is hard to get to. Um, so Sherry asked Jack if he could put a gate in. Um, little did we know that kind of the spacing is a little bit different for yes. sizing and stuff. So we we're hoping to simply just pull a post out, put didn't a post happen, in. Didn't happen. Wasn't going to happen. It didn't work out. We thought. Chainsaw. Yeah. So we yeah. tried to pull it out, or I should say Jack tried to pull it out with uh, our John Deere tractor. It wasn't budging. So you had to cut it down with the chainsaw. Yes. And, Dig and a new hole. And then I was doing a tour. We do tours all the time. And I saw Jack out there with that. That pole my holes PhD, digger just my PhD. <laughs> I've got a PhD. <laughs> Post hole digger. <laughs> he's just out there just oh just trying to get all this this dirt. And I'm sure you guys don't know because none of you guys live uh, in Lapeer, Michigan, but we are just rock central. Everything is rocks in our pasture. So as you're digging, you're just hitting rocks, pulling rocks up. I didn't I didn't hit rocks really that much no? in there. Awesome. That's when I had to bury that sheep the other day. Okay. I had to work, hit the rock. I hit, okay rocks like that so <laughs> so and what, and what he's talking about uh burying the sheep unfortunately uh this week was it was it fourth no the day before fourth of july um last friday oh was it last friday, friday see this week's this friday week's morning. been uh kind of because i was off that, apart. i was off that day and you were up north and you asked me to go and uh, take care of the sheep yeah. <laughs> so we when we lambed this year we had a mom uh, a tunis mom that had a, a prolapse, so which means that her uterus and, and vagina was prolapsing out. Um, and this was even before the lambs even came. Um, so we had to remedy that. The lambs came, then the vet sewed her up, but she we had to take the lambs from her because she was in such rough shape. Um, unfortunately, she never fully came back. Her body, everything like yeah, that, she, she was just kind of not where she needed to be. And... Unfortunately, she just didn't make it. Um, she just kept kind of getting sickly. We were giving her medicine. We were giving her antibiotics, and we were giving her some um, oral uh, vitamins. She just wasn't. She just wasn't coming back. So um, I was up north. The family was up north, and Anne Marie, who wor also works here, um, that takes care of the animals when we're gone, uh, unfortunately found her in one of the the stalls that we have. Uh, run-ins and she just had passed away so I had to call Jack and and we had to bury her and uh, 
So he came to take care of that. That's what I'm saying. Jack just takes care of the stuff that needs to be done on the farm when I'm not available or I don't have the time to do it. I'm only 35 minutes around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But it's just, it's been a crazy week. I replenished our meat um, inventory in our computer system. We, we took a couple uh, lambs to the butcher about a month ago. Uh, we got them back a couple weeks ago, just haven't had the time to put them into our inventory system. So they, they've sat in the freezers. Um, but finally got that all taken care of. Uh, had a huge meat order I just delivered today to somebody um, that they just like, they like lamb meat. And uh, so I delivered that order to them. I had to do a bunch of uh, QuickBooks pack stuff. So that's why I'm, I get stuck inside. I don't inside. have to do that. <laughs> I even offered Jack one time. I was like, hey, Jack, I'll go outside and I'll take care of all the animals. I'll do what needs to be done. If you want to sit here and go through this. And he's, I never saw him no move thanks. so fast in my life. Just <laughs> gone. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm in charge of the farm operations, which sometimes to be in charge of farm operations is to delegate stuff to be done or things like that. And you got to sit back and take care of other business stuff. So this is part of the job, but I wanted to introduce you all to Jack because he, he does everything around the farm um, that needs to be done, taking care of the animals and letting me know about things going on on the farm that I may not see. Uh, now I work every single weekend, as long as I'm not up north or on vacation once in a while. Um, I'll take care of the animals on the weekend so I get to see what's going on also on the, on the farm. But uh, during the week, I'm kind of kind of stuck. Um, what else do we want to talk about here? Oh, so we have, we've been getting in a lot of our samples in from our sample knitters. Um, so thank you to them. They are amazing. Uh, we offer um, kind of gift cards, credits uh, online to purchase other goods on our, our shop in exchange for people to make uh, knitted goods. And we've been receiving them in as of late, especially. But I want to give a special shout out to Valerie, who lives in West Virginia, that we've had the opportunity to meet. Uh, she first liked our farm, started purchasing some of our stuff. Then we got to speak to her more online, on Instagram, things like that. She actually came all the way from West Virginia to uh, Yarn Centric in Maryland and got to meet her. She actually brought us presents. She got me this, this hat. It's hard to see, but it says, uh, Country Roads Take Me Home. And she just did a knit uh, project for us. With that knit project, it was a, a pair of socks. She also freeze dries candies and different things like that. So I want to give a big prop to Valerie for sending us candies because she knows the way to to me is through my stomach right there. <laughs> but uh, she, she's become a great friend of ours, and we appreciate the, the little treats and the, the friendship that we've, uh, we've made, especially with a bunch of our knitters, but shout out to Valerie. So this one, these are little uh, taffies that she freeze dried. And then this one is a freeze dried ice cream <laughs> sandwich, which I've never tried. Do you want a little bit of it? Sure. Okay. There you go, sir. Give that a little shot. Probably go pretty good with the coffee. Mm. That's different. I've never had that before. You're like an astronaut. Right? <laughs> that is astronaut food, right? But delicious. But we wanted to say thank you to her. The last thing is Becca, who's the uh, the seamstress, has been working very hard. And we have designs that we we stick to, right? So like Sherry's sweater bag and and then Cindy makes the one-of-a-kind backpacks or um, kind of the specialty bags. Well, Becca came up with a great idea to continue to use our note waste policy and the scraps that we have, and she's made the pip squeak. So a lot of these bags go with the color schemes from Sherry's sweater bags. And they all hold at least four skeins of wool. So it's kind of like a project bag for your project bag, right? So you can simply put your skeins in here. You could cake them, you could do whatever you want. And then it comes with a zipper. It has our waxed cotton on the bottom, so it's gonna keep all the moisture and everything out of your project bags and has natural leather handle on the side. So. We thought that was a pretty great idea that Becca came up with. 
and the whole pipsqueak thing <laughs> actually came from Jack <laughs> when uh, when Sherry was a kid, right? Yes. So how how did that yeah. all work out? Well, when uh, when Cindy and I started dating, uh, Sherry was only six years old, and she was sometimes a shadow. She She'd ask if she could go bowling with us or whatever, and somehow I got calling her Pipsqueak. And then Cindy actually had a, had a uh, little business going on Etsy. It was CJ Pipsqueaks, and that kind of came from the whole thing. And then uh, they were referring to Declan during the so, adoption yeah, process. When, when Declan was being adopted, that, they, they call him Pipsqueak. That goes clear back to sherry i'm sure she remembers that <laughs> oh yeah she remembers it well but that's why so that's why we call it the pipsqueak because it's a smaller version of the sherry sweater bag there's no frills nothing anything like that about it. there's no pockets on the inside so it's a very sleek design it's very easy design there's nothing to get caught up on but it's the pipsqueak the sherry sweater bag so that is the brand new thing that i think sherry literally put it online today oh and uh we've already sold one Valerie, actually, uh, was the first person to, to buy one. Huh. Came in today. So that will be on the way to you, Valerie, shortly. But we have um, a bunch of different colors. The, the piggy pink. We have the, the blue right there. And I think we have a couple other extra ones back there. But they're all online. Um, and they're all available. We have uh, this week. I'm just trying to think. This week. Today's your last day working. So I got, I'm working tomorrow with the animals itself. But... Next week, we're really going to try to move the cows into an electric fence area into the pasture next to our lambing barn. It's very high. It's perfect for the cows to get into and start eating down to help with our rotational grazing. Uh, I'm also working on pre-orders for pork because those guys are going to the butcher uh, August 22nd. So they're going to go to the butcher. We're going to be selling pork, sausage, uh, ribs, all that kind of stuff from them and nitrate nitrate free bacon nitrate free bacon yep we decided uh i bought some nitrate free bacon from the processor to see how we liked it how we tasted it uh, i'm le i was leaning towards nitrate free but i wanted to make sure that it was tasty enough mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. people would want it and we had and it was yeah good it was good, delicious good solid flavor not heavy on salt or anything so yeah. it was just so we'll, we're gonna have nitrate free flavor. bacon from them but we're gonna be taking six to the butcher so just the farm life keeps moving on, but I think we'll have to, to do another one. Maybe we'll have to videotape uh, Jack out there doing some work with the tractor <laughs> to do that kind of stuff to show you yeah. exactly everything he, he does. But we appreciate him. We do appreciate okay. you, Jack, everything that you do for us. Uh, it makes life a lot easier because it's hard to think of when Sherry and I first started this business. It was just her and I. And yeah. then I had one friend uh, from my old work that would come couple times a week at the most for yeah. a couple hours to help out and things like that but we've grown exponentially and we wouldn't be able to do it without yeah. without you without cindy without Anne marie without becca everything like that yeah. it's it's a true team effort and and we like that it's a family farm because jack is technically my uncle yeah so family helping family out but yeah. we appreciate you guys and i i know we're getting a little bit lengthy here but We'll try to do more coffee chats, happy hours, things like that. It just gets tough in the summertime with people traveling, trying to see family, and our yarn shows are coming up. We we got a lot of dying to do because we we leave in three and a half weeks for Seattle for Flock. Huh. So Sherry and I and and our family, our my kids, my wife, everything, we're all driving out to Seattle and and taking all our merchandise. Cindy's gonna fly out there because she's so busy dying. Um, it's 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 crazy time of year so we're, we're, we love it we look forward to it it's just non-stop so we apologize if we don't do enough uh reaching out and showing you guys how the farm's going but we appreciate you all and hope to see you real soon cheers cheers bye